Hi guys, so this is a proof of concept. I wanted to see whether I could take the Wigan data that's sent out of a biometric reader, put that into a Raspberry Pi, parse the data, get the token number, and cross-reference that against the database to see whether someone has or has not got access. Pretty much what an ACU would do. So, in this example, I have two biometric readers. Uh, on the left-hand side one, we have IEVO, and on the right-hand side, we have Suprema. The only things that are wired um, into those units and out of those units is power for both units and Wigan data out. There's no other data connections to the PC at all. It's just I've pre-enrolled um, my finger, one finger on both units. And for this just demonstration purposes, we're not focused on the on enrollment or nothing. It's just getting the data out and, and parsing it just like an ACU would. So we've got the three wires here coming from the Suprema reader and we've got the three wires over here that, that trade around uh, for the Wigan for both of those units. They're just sent through some resistors and some clamping diodes um, just, to, just to shift the levels down because the Pi won't accept the 5 volts that comes out of those units. Um, you just blow the pins up basically. So that drops that down to a level that can be accepted. The three LEDs at the bottom, red, would mean that access was denied exclusively, regardless of what reader we're using. Um, green on the left hand side would mean that I won't try to put my finger on the IEVO reader and access was granted. The right hand side is I tried to put I put my finger on the Suprema reader and access was granted. Those three LEDs are wired straight out of the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi, they're not directly connected to those units in any way. So for also for the demonstration purposes, normally obviously with an ACU, you, you, when you present your finger and the Wigan data is sent, you would look at a database that's running <clears throat> on, look at a user list that, you know, that's held on the device itself to see whether access was or wasn't granted. Um, and obviously then you'd have some sort of central database where you could add users and they get synchronized across all the devices. But just for demonstration purposes, to keep it nice and simple and quick, um, when I present my finger, Wigan data is sent to the Pi. The Pi then talks to one of my servers online, i.e. the cloud, and um, sends back information about whether the user was or you know, did or did not have access. I've only got myself um, enrolled on the system and it's, I've got a series of web pages which I'll put picture in picture just to show you what's going on and I've also got a, a secure shell that we're logged into um, from a Windows machine onto the Pi itself so we can see the script itself the C code running and spitting out data and also the web page itself which is obviously hosted separately um, with the option to you know, grant or deny access when a finger is presented <clears throat> so that's the basic setup so we've got two biometric readers powered up, Wigan data right to the breadboard just for prototyping and then drop down to the sh uh, level shifted down and wide into the GPIO on the Pi and just some output uh, visual LEDs just so we can see what's going on. So what I'll do is I'll chuck this in picture in picture and then we can carry on. So this is the um, secure shell just using PuTTY to SSH into, into the box, or into the board. Um, and this is just a, a C program that's running that's listening for Wigan data and just spits it out for me as and when a finger's presented to say whether access was granted or denied. <clears throat> just next to that, uh, it's just a standard web page. You can see, oh, by the way, this won't be available once this video is released. It just is basically on my website, dangerrains.com, and this is just reading um, a web page where data will get uploaded, um, events will get uploaded from the Pi to that. So, so it's like a, a live event log, but it's hosted online, just for example pro, uh, purposes. And then we've got another tab open here, and this is a, this is a quick link just obviously for per demonstration purposes that allows me to enable or disable access for myself. So in enabled state, when I present my finger, both the readers would accept my fingerprint regardless. Um, but when it's enabled, then we'll see that there's a green LED and an access granted event. And if I disable my uh, access for myself, then I present my finger. The readers themselves will accept it. The Wigan date is sent. I'll get a red LED and the event log would say access was denied. So let's just make sure it's enabled. Okay, so on this page, we've basically got two sections. The top section, 
the yellow section, is a demonstration so we can use a single reader to clock both in and out. So that will be ideal for time and attendance where you've just got a reader on site, um, a right is connected to a Raspberry Pi, and that just basically uploads time and attendance data. There'll be no toggle switches or nothing, it's just present your finger, you get clocked in, present your finger again, you get clocked out. And the date and time stamp is all just you know automatically sent up with the information from the Pi. The blue section is just live events. Um, as of when I put my finger on to the reader, whether it was the in reader, which is the left, the out reader, which is the right, and whether access was uh, granted or denied. So just because here it says um, that I'm in, and this one says that I'm out, the top is just toggling it. Whether obviously the the, the events at the bottom is exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so. Let's present my finger to the Ivo reader. It scans it. We get a green LED that lights up, and we can see on the screen that the outcome was access granted. Present my finger to the Supreme reader. We can see that the LED for that went green, and we can also see on the screen that the outcome was access granted. So, as I said, the the checking of whether I have or have not got access is all done in the cloud. There's no, there's no, um, there's no checking on the Pi itself at the moment. Um, it's just you know basically checks against the server to see whether I have or haven't got access, and it's reading the Wigan data that's at, sent out of those boxes, and the LEDs light up from the GPIO, not from those units. So just because we get a green light there or a red light on the IEVO and on this doesn't mean that those would light up. It's only sent out from the GPIO. <clears throat> so now if we set the access, disable access, then if I present my finger again, obviously the reader itself will accept my print, but we'll get a red LED and an access denied. So you've red LED, access was denied, and then the outcome, access denied from the events. The same with this one. Red LED means access was denied. And as we can see from the, uh, again, from the event log, access was denied and we can see that obviously everything that I've been doing has been coming through um, from on the shell obviously you wouldn't normally see the shell that would just all run in the background silently and quietly but obviously for demonstration purposes just so I can debug and so you can see what's going on in real time um, it's on the screen okay guys so that, I mean that's it really in a nutshell so yes we can that was a sort of a question I had in my mind you know can I get that data out of those readers um, Parse it with a Raspberry Pi, which is you know extremely inexpensive in the respect of you know making it an ACU. Um, obviously, those LEDs um, we can put some transistors on the board, or um, maybe through with an IC, some sort of dial and array or something can then have an array of uh, relays that can be fired. So we could have relay for act for in and a relay for out. Um, you know, we've got plenty of I.O. on that board, we could have more relays to do more things, you know, special events, click a relay at a certain time, there's lots of possibilities. Or have no relays at all and just have it as a, as a time and attendance solution. So you can still utilise biometrics, but you've got a cheap, well, it's the wrong word to use, really cheap, but inexpensive way of getting the data that comes out of those readers, parsing it, and then uploading it to a cloud portal. So, what do you think guys um so you know this is very much in the early stages there's still a lot of research and development that needs to be done um you know the pi can be quite prone to sort of you know if you have a power cut you could get corruption on the sd card and things like that so that would need to be taken into account and other bits and pieces so there's lots to think about a lot of hurdles that would need to be overcome but as i said as, a, as an inexpensive way of getting data out of a, out of a reader and then up to the cloud it, um, it's, it's really good, really, really good. And obviously, um, if you're using iEvo, you can still you can run the iEvo software on any machine and just connect to it because it's plugged into into a network. If it's not on the same site, just you know, VPN tunnel straight into it. Um, you know, you could have multiple devices across multiple sites, and you know, you can you could enrol a central point. Um, Put that number in obviously that could be automated in respect of getting the, like, the token number into the cloud you enroll enroll in one place and then bang you can access every site um obviously you could have access levels of options to say you can only access site a b and c if so on and so forth um <clears throat> with the suprema you could do it all on site without a pc at all 
because you could use it as standalone because you've got the options um, within the reader itself to add fingerprints and then it will just give you an ID number of, of that user and then you could just basically add that ID to a user in the cloud and says you know when when ID 34 is sent or 201 is sent that's Paul Smith and clock him in clock him out it could be used as as a gym membership system or other such membership systems where you know you want to account for people being in and out working out the hours not necessarily timesheet but the hours that they that they spent on site um, you know in a gym or somewhere or some other sort of membership club you know and then you could run reports weekly monthly you know how many hours has this person you know been in our in our gym or <clears throat> in our club you know for uh, this month or this week or whatever so there's lots of possibilities really so I'm just sort of a uh, I've designed the uh, the software and you know put together some basic, uh, you know, very basic electronics, just a few resistors and <laughs> a couple of diodes, a couple of LEDs. But obviously that can be further expanded as and as and when you know as and when whatever sort of requirements are needed. So it's just to put it out there really. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your thoughts, your ideas, worthwhile, not worthwhile. Scenarios in which it can be used and sort of some feedback. You know, I can I can push this out there um, quite hard, or I can sort of you know make a variety of different types of products um, for different things. Or if we you know if I'm getting a load of people saying no, you know, this is a good idea, this is a good idea, and everyone's sort of saying the same thing, then maybe sort of focus efforts on that first. Anyway, please let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Bye.